So, so now I, Epi, I would like to ask you several questions uh, around living with OCD. So the first one is, like, whenever you find yourself tired or exhausted mm -hmm. from OCD, what would you do to relax? What do I do? Um, well, it depends. It, sometimes I will, you know, like, maybe take a deep breath. Take a lot of deep breaths, not just one deep breath, a lot of deep breaths. Um, and I will... I'm sorry, I, do you see me through the camera? Because I don't think the camera... I think it's off. Sorry, yeah, you guys. can't just uh, st I stop sharing the screen. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm coming back. <laughs> um, so I usually, um, it really depends. I sometimes need to take a really hot shower so I can be stressed. Um, I get very stressed at work many times. I'm always like thinking about what's the next thing to do. I'm having a hard time lately with the staying pre present, focused, and mindful. So at work, it's like I'm, I'm always thinking of what's the next thing that I have to do. And instead of like, I don't know, talking to my, my colleagues during lunch, I have to, like, I'm on my phone planning something or, like, you know. So that, that's, like, a really hard thing for me. Um, but and when I when, what I do to try to be, you know, be stressed from that, for example, is that I shut my phone for a minute or, you know, I'm, you know, I'm very, I'm usually very uh, attached to my phone because I'm always thinking about something to do and not to just be disconnected. But, um... Other things that I do, like I said, is I read a lot. And reading is mindful and it's connected to mindfulness because you're, you're in somebody else's life. So at that moment, I'm someone else. And the thoughts are in the back of my head, but I don't have time for them. I don't have time for negative thoughts. I only have time to understand what this other person is experiencing um, and writing. I should do more exercise, though. Maybe that would help. Hmm. Help. Yeah, and that's great. And you're start you're studying neuroscience, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit more of it, maybe this year. So, could you explain a little? a little bit that why OCD is not only a psychological disorder but also a biolo a bi biological one? Well, okay. I don't know it perfectly yet. Well, I've I've done I've done more of the psychological aspects of OCD, but on my own I've read more of the neuroscientific part. I know in general that it is caused by this um, our OCD and our fear system. It's connected to our fear system. So the amygdala is the part of the brain that is the primitive part of the brain. So it's considered like where we get our flight or fight response. So and that OCD in kind in in, in a way is like where we have that fear of everything. Like we always in, we're hyper alert of, of this situation. So that amygdala is like working too much for constant like scanning of the environment. That's one of the parts of the brain that's connected to fear, anxiety, OCD also. Then I watched um, a documentary recently that it's, they also say that OCD is like, you know, of course it's due to like this, this rupture of the neural circuitry in our brains, like the neurons firing, and they're misfiring in, during like the wrong moment. In particular, the last one said that it's like the anterior cingulate gyrus part of a part of our brain is like the way it's circulating is not. It's like coming back, and it's going around, and in, and it doesn't go forward. So what they do is they try to unblock that. That's kind of what I understand, and I hope that the real scientists here don't want to just like. They'll be like, this girl does not know her science. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, so one last question. Uh, we talked about ERP today. Yeah. And as I'm going to try themselves, they'll find they may fail sometimes. So mm -hmm. what should they do to resist the urge to ritualize? What should they do to resist the urge? To ritualize? To ritualize? Okay, so it's very complicated in the beginning. So in the beginning stages, you'll find yourself not being able to resist the urge to ritualize. So exposure is not linear. 
I found that for months, even though then like I was exposing, I was actually compulsing also. And I was going back to the same thing and then I was, you know, exposing again. So it's not linear. What you have to continue to do is to write down when this happens. And with your therapist working on actually like focusing on the ones that you keep relapsing to. Because, you know, the relapse happens with specific thoughts in particular. So I would say yeah. focus on that. Um, and what they, the, the one thing I would say also, if, if the urge is very, very, very strong and you're going to kind of like you feel like a panic attack coming, compulse for like a minute or two. If you are in the stage of insight that you know that you're compulsing after a while, then stop immediately and go on for it. Go on and do whatever you have to do. Um, I would say allow yourself to let it go. You know, that's why I say compulse. Compulsions shouldn't be done after a while. You should try not to do them ever. But if you're having a really bad day and the compulsion makes you feel better for one time once, do it. Don't like strain yourself. Because it's almost like an automatic thing that since we have this disorder, it's like we need to do it for a minute to feel better. But if you continue to do it, you're not going to feel better. And in the long run, you're going to be a slave to a mental disorder. I hope you know that. That's what I found. We learned a lot about your journey with OCD and what CBT and ERP can help with living with OCD today. So thank you, Epi, for welcome. sharing these amazing things with us. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. I hope the community is stronger and I will always be there for everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye.